Nell, Simon, and their son Art are ready to welcome friends and family for what promises to be a perfect Christmas gathering. Well, perfect that is, except for one thing. Okay, so Silent Night is a new holiday-themed dark comedy, and I believe it's now out in theaters in some places, but it is also available on AMC+, at least in the U.S., and that's where I watched it. We have Kira Knightley and Matthew Good starring as Nell and Simon, respectively. They, along with their children, are in this large country estate getting ready for the arrival of several old friends for Christmas. And as everyone arrives, strange, cryptic, and then even aggressive conversations begin to occur. They speak vaguely of packs and decisions, which then feel very foreboding. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever seen it, but there's an indie movie from the mid-90s called The Last Supper. I mean, it starred uh, Cameron Diaz, Courtney B. Vance, and uh, just a bunch of other actors. I mean, it's another very dark comedy. And at the beginning, I began to get vibes of that movie. Now, Silent Night turns out to be completely different. The cast in this is wonderful, and one of the standouts is Roman Griffin Davis, who plays Nell and Simon's oldest son, Art. Now, if you're not familiar with him, he's Jojo in Jojo Rabbit. And here he gets to be very adult, which is unsettling as he's clearly a kid, but operating and speaking like someone much older. There is a ton of comedy in this, but it's pretty biting and cringy. It's one of those where you know you probably shouldn't be laughing, but you can't help it, and you then glance around to see if everybody else is as disturbed as you are. Now, I went into this blind, and I had fun trying to figure out what was going on, trying to decide if I believed what I was being told. The central theme is one of disaster and the question of quality of life and death. Doomsday has arrived in the form of a toxic storm that threatens to wipe out humanity, so these friends gather for one last time together. The banter and dialogue delivery is quick and witty, despite it being incredibly mean at points. I mean, it's like everyone in the film has turned off their filters and just kind of speaks their minds. We can see how freeing it is at points, but also how not everyone is totally up to hearing brutal truth. Along with the actors that I had already mentioned, we have several that I'm sure you're going to recognize. There's Annabelle Wallace, who was most recently in Malignant. I mean, she is great in this, but she's not the most likable character. There's Sope Derisu. I think I'm saying his name right. He was in the Netflix film His House, which, I mean, he was great in that. But you might recognize him most from the just simply amazing Gangs of London. And I love his character in Silent Night because he brings warmth, but also a level-headed calmness and logic to his entire situation. Then there's Lily Rose Depp, Lucy Punch, Kirby Howell Baptiste, who each of them add a different dimension to the cast. And I like them for the most part, but Lucy Punch's character was pretty off-putting because of how she kept treating her partner. Now, I didn't realize it until I looked it up on IMDb later, but Nell and Simon have twin sons as well as Art. And the twins are real-life brothers of Roman Griffin Davis. And the family resemblance, I mean, it's really strong. But then the director of this turns out to be their mom. So I'd be curious to see how the filming went with these boys being directed by their mom, especially with how the characters then behave. Now, despite the comedy in this, the overall tone of the film is quite morose and depressing. This one will pretty much leave you in the bell jar because there's not really any hope that's ever offered. I think that's also what may turn you off from this. I was talking with my friend Ruben from the Ruby Tuesday, and we discussed how depressing Christmas movies just aren't all that appealing, which I think makes sense. I mean, we need a bit of hope and cheer, even if there are serious or sad topics that are addressed, so that at the end, we are at least left slightly uplifted. Now, I like the contained setting that this has, where the families have gathered on an estate, and it just provides one more layer of isolation and aloneness to the story. And I know that's not really a word, but I made it up. But it makes our characters feel the hopelessness, even though they try to put on their best and happy face. There are times where the environmental storm is shown, along with like some cyclone or tornado type things, and these are very clearly CGI. I don't think they're distracting enough to break you out of the narrative, but they also don't look real. So the sense of danger or dread that can come from seeing them approach us, I think it's greatly diminished. So overall, I had fun with this, and I laughed out loud a bunch at the dark comedy. The dialogue is quick, and the banner works well between the cast. The actors do a great job of capturing hopeless desperation mixed with believably trepidatious resolve. And while this is a wildly depressing story with pretty much zero hope, the 92-minute journey is fun, even if the ending will leave you wishing for something slightly more upbeat. There's no sex or nudity, but there is a crazy amount of profanity and some violence. I give Silent Night three and a half out of five couches. Are there any holiday-themed dark comedies that you enjoy? I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.